Why, well, hello. I'm Shana Jerns. Welcome to the Shana Jerns fireside video chat with this very old rocking chair that my grandmother gave me for free. So first, what this video is not going to be, it's not going to be a technical how to film an interview, how to compose a shot, how to light it, what backgrounds, what crew members do you want, what equipment, it's not going to be any of that. It's really going to be about how to use an interview to improve your video, to tell a story, to give you the kinds of options that you want when you're editing or for the editor that you'll send this to. So hopefully by following these tips, you're gonna have an interview that is easier to edit, has less complicated things to fix, better audio, more editing options, and saves you money so that you don't have to go back and reshoot anything. So it really ensures that the client is gonna be happier with their performance and also ensure that uh, you're gonna get everything that you need to make a video that fulfills certain goals, whether it be with the story or with marketing. So the very first thing that you want to do before you do an interview is make sure that you have a really solid agreed upon video brief and or outline that you've went over with the client. The brief is gonna make sure that you have everything spelled out as literal as possible with what you want from this video and what you want from the interview. How does it fit into maybe a bigger video in general or if the entire video is based on one interview? What messages are you hoping to get through with this video? Your message might be, we're a nice company and we care about our employees, but you can't just say, we're a nice company, we care about employees and expect people to believe you. So you need to really dig in and figure out how can you show that and not tell it? Um, I'll make a separate video about video briefs because I love them, first of all. It's like once you have a solid brief, it feels like the video is 60-70% done. And also just as a storyteller and a communicator, a brief really helps so that you know exactly what your goal is with the video and how you want to achieve that goal effectively. So if you can't wait for that video to come out, just Google video brief outline, video outline, and it'll give you kind of an idea of how to prepare the video in general. Um, but let's get into the interview side. So a big job for the video producer slash interviewer is to come up with questions. These should be heavily reliant on the video brief, but also how you write the question can have a big impact on what kind of answers that you're gonna get out. So for example, um, a recent project I did was for a tech startup. A big part of the video was they wanted to explain why the company started and why it matters. So instead of asking, can you tell me the history of this company? That kind of gives the interviewee too much room and not enough direction. And they could really take that anyway. But if you already know, what they like about their history and why they started, make something more specific of a question. Make three questions instead of one. So you could start off saying, how did you meet your co-founder? A question like that is especially good if you're trying to have a more authentic, personal feel to the video. It kind of starts them off in a story instead of a history lesson. Which kind of brings me to another point about these questions is you want them to be open-ended. Obviously no yes or no questions. You also don't want it to be so specific that the interviewee feels like you're forcing an answer out of them. And then sometimes the subject of the interview is going to go into a big story that they know answers a lot of your questions at once and sometimes they might be a little short answers and you need to draw out more from them. So sometimes it can be good to have listed below each of your questions little subtopics or um, mini questions to ensure that you're gonna get all the information you want. For the example, it could be category, history, first question, how did you meet your co-founder? Sub question, what did you like about them right away? When did you realize that you had a really good partner? And then it could go into another history related question. What problem does this business solve? What was the world like when this business started? And sometimes interviews are more run and gun and you're jumping around interviewing multiple people or you don't really get to 
interact with them before you film then, but if possible, try to interact with the subject before interviewing. I like to really vet the questions and see how good they are and this helps not only make sure my questions are all encompassing for the video but doing this can have a lot of benefits for one it can help the subject feel more at ease that they already know what they're going to talk about plus since sometimes it's in person sometimes it's over the phone conversation they're in a more relaxed state so they might have more free-flowing answers and sound more conversational and get their point across better than when they're sitting in front of a camera. So it can be good to take notes during that. So then when you are in the interview and they might have closed up a little bit, you can say, during our phone call you mentioned how this specific thing was happening right when you started your company. Could you also talk about that? This brings me to my next point, which is listen, listen, listen. I'm a strong advocate for not being a one-man videographer, producer person. I like to be controlling the interview and then have someone else on the camera, someone else doing audio, and um, depending on the budget, having a gaffer or having more people really depends on what's going on. But someone needs to be dedicated to listening to the answers and seeing that big picture. Because if you're on the camera, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, they just moved out of frame a little bit, or they sat up and their head is cut off now. <laughs> but you might not notice that if you're really listening, or you, by focusing on this stuff, then you're probably not really listening to exactly what they're saying and thinking about how it fits into the video at large. By really listening to the subject talk, you are able to live edit, meaning that you can say, oh, I noticed that you just said it instead of the name of the company. Could we try that sentence again, except saying the name of the company, just so we know exactly who you're talking about? Or that was a really great way of answering that question, but I want a version that's really short and to the point just in case we need that for editing which reminds me that if you are not the editor it could be helpful to have the editor with you for the interview so they can give those kinds of tips where um, they say oh that person stumbled or oh did you hear that noise in the background or oh i think we forgot to get an introduction just have another set of ears listening and thinking about how it fits into the big picture and this ties into a quickish tip that I wanted to mention, which is more often than not, you want the subject to be giving answers that can stand on their own. Um, a common problem I have is that halfway through the interview, the subject will say, well, like I said before, blah, 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 blah. More often than not, you're not gonna use their answers in the order that they gave them. So you need to be watching for that kind of language and telling them that, uh, some of these questions can be a little repetitive, but we like to lead questions in different ways. So it's okay if you repeat yourself, we encourage it, we like it to get a couple options. And here are a couple tips that I think are helpful for really any kind of video that you can do every single time that you have an interview. Make sure to get for each question, or at least for the video as a whole, an introduction and a conclusion. It's kind of like writing a paper in your head or just writing a story. Um, you want to have an idea in mind of how to introduce the topic and how to conclude it. How can you wrap it up? What makes sense to end on? What makes sense to start with? What would make sense for them to know first? And this doesn't have to be something that you actually get the subject to say in that order, the introduction and the conclusion. You could realize while they're talking like, hey, that kind of works as an introduction or like, hey, that works as a conclusion and then go back and say, how can we wrap this up? Um, or, I think we might have missed kind of introducing this topic, let's start there. So that's another reason why listening is so important. And these can be something that you do for each major topic, it could be even for each question. Oftentimes for each question, what I have is we start with just saying the question and seeing whatever the subject talks about. And then you can go into sub-questions, or you could also go into something like, that was amazing, so much good information. In case we don't end up using that full answer, let's get a summarized version. How can we condense that into a sentence? This can be kind of tricky for the person to do a lot of the time, so if they're having trouble, give them some suggestions. 
And that can be as literal as saying a sentence or building a sentence with them that they actually say. And usually they do better than you think with saying a specific sentence. But oftentimes those like short sentences that you made can be incredibly helpful for editing and getting your point across effectively in the video. Another thing that almost every interview needs is for the subject to introduce themselves. So I like to ask them to do it in a couple of different ways. It could be just say their first name, maybe you want first and last name, any kind of background or relevant criteria of why they're being interviewed. So a lot of the times it's, I ask for first name and the title and the company for these corporate type videos. Um, so that would be, hi, I'm Shayna. I am the founder of Storyhouse. Or I ask them to give a little more background with it. Let's also just throw in what is Storyhouse, even if the video is not an introduction to the company or just what kind of natural curiosities do you have as they introduce themselves. And that kind of goes along with most questions. What natural curiosities do you have? Because you might bring out something that you never thought before. Now I'm gonna switch focuses to a lot more of the client or the subject or the interviewee side of filming an interview video. I think it's always good to ask the subject if they've been on camera before because if they haven't, they're probably nervous or if they have, they might not have had a good experience because they didn't watch this video. So either right before the interview or if I was able to talk to them days before or weeks before when we we're planning, I like to try to put them at ease, um, get out any of their frustrations or bad experiences or worries about being on camera. Usually the first thing I say is, hey, this is not live TV. Um, you can mess up. You can say, oh, I don't like how I said that. Uh, let me try again. Or, no, that's the wrong word. I'm going to start that sentence over. We want that. We want you to be aware of how you're talking about stuff. And we want you to know it's okay to mess up because there's not gonna be a blooper reel um, and no one's gonna know that it happened. My goal as a producer and as an editor is to make the client look good and make the story interesting and I'm not gonna leave in anything that is embarrassing. If the person is especially struggling with getting a sentence out, we can always say, hey, that first part was good, let's get that second part. And also I like to say that I can help you get those answers out. I can help you figure out what you want to say. We can talk through it while we're on camera, you don't have to, and I actually, I do not want you to write out all your answers word for word, what you're gonna say, word for word. I have had subjects without me knowing write out exactly what they're gonna say, and that makes it a lot harder because it turns into more of a speech and less of a conversation. And um, unless you love public speaking, it's not going to come out very well as a speech. Most of the people you're interviewing are not going to be actors. If you're doing a lot of corporate videos, maybe they had some more experience presenting. Even if they did do some presenting, they it's not the same as sitting in front of a camera without an audience. And um, it's a different kind of pressure, really. So if a client um, in our phone call ahead of time tells me that they're especially nervous and they don't want to be on camera or they've never done it before, I'll tell them to do some practicing, as silly as it sounds. Um, you can just take out your phone and start talking about your business, start talking about this whatever subjects we're going to talk about. It's kind of good to just get used to that feeling of almost in a conversation with yourself slash talking to a black box. Just have that seem less of a weird thing to do than it really is. And I also remind them that the first one is going to be the hardest and it's really going to get easier the more that you are interviewed and are on camera. I've seen it right before my eyes have the first video with a client. Pretty rough first take. Um, then giving them a pep talk and some advice and then do a better second and third take and then a month later do another video with them and they're just boom natural like they were still nervous but they didn't realize that they really grew a lot in that last experience and they knew what to expect it was less scary less anxiety inducing and um, they really killed it <laughs> in my opinion First of all, I get sweaty every time I conduct an interview or I'm being interviewed. And I also get sweaty every time I film a video like this, even though I'm alone and I'm pretty calm, like 
For the interviewer side or the producer side, if you have never been on camera yourself, I think being on camera is a great way to learn how to conduct an interview better. You kind of can understand these thoughts that are coming through the client's head and what worries and like what you're worried about yourself and um, it can put a lot of pressure on you to know like what do I look like when I'm talking and what do I sound like and it can be kind of scary for people. So make a tips video like this. Do something to help practice. It really helps you be a better listener and a better interview conductor because it's harder than it looks. Another thing for the person on camera to know is that this is gonna be different than writing an article. Yes, you can still edit your words, delete and start over and change answers, but there's a whole audio component, meaning you can't just speak like you're reading. People wanna hear some emotion in your voice. You need some pauses. Um, you need to tell stories. I like to have my videos pretty conversational. Bebo! Free cola. Did you get my text? What text? I said I'm filming a YouTube video. With that, it can be important to take breaks. For the subject, know yourself and know like, hey, like, I need some water. I need like five minutes of quiet. The producer interviewee can also get kind of tired like doing that much listening. Maybe that's just me. I was kind of struggled in college with listening to a professor talk for hours. Um, so you can also say, hey, crew, let's take five, because interviews can get kind of long and tedious. I also want to throw in a random question I get a lot of times from clients is, what should I wear? You can read full articles on what you should wear for an interview, but general rules I like to follow is no green if you're going to have a green screen. Don't wear bright white because it can throw off kind of the balance and your shirt will look like it's glowing. A lot of people like to wear black and some people say it's fine to wear black for an interview, but I think it can make people look too two-dimensional. Not the darkest black, maybe a dark gray or dark blue is better in my mind. But in general, I say wear something that you like and you feel good in and you feel comfortable in and you feel like yourself. Another big no-no though is like really tight stripes or a tight pattern. Um, I've worn that myself in one video just because I was like, I don't know what else to wear, I'm gonna wear this. And it kind of, the camera does a weird wavy thing. Sometimes I also hear don't wear um, too bold of or a distracting shirt. Um, really depends to me on the shirt. But in general, I think you can wear colorful things if that's your style. I don't think you should be trying to mute and tone down your style just because you're gonna be on camera. I think it can be good to get that across too and feel like yourself. Another quick tip um, for the editor of your interview is to transcribe it. I had an internship once where 95% of what I did was just transcribe interviews and it sucked and it's not very efficient and it's really boring. Um, you can really get to know the content, but I don't think it's worth it to transcribe it yourself. You can pay a person to do it or you can use an online service like Rev is what I use. I'm not sponsored by them, but I think it's like a dollar a minute or a dollar fifty a minute. From a producer standpoint, if I were to transcribe it myself and what I charge hourly, like the, the client is gonna be happy that I use a service to save them time and give it to someone who can do it professionally and really fast. And then having that transcription means that you can really easily pull out sentences that you do like and put it into an outline in the order that you want it so with like the time code like at five minutes they said this that's a great introduction so then you don't lose stuff and like oh at one minute they said this this is a good middle and then I like to send that outline to the client so that they can see what I'm gonna do before I do it if there's any red flags usually they're happy that they saw anything ahead of time and that kind of also has them pre-approve it the only problem with just using a transcription and not watching the video to get the content from it is that maybe the performance and how they said it is not as clear as you imagined or maybe they, something else happened during it where it's just not a great sentence to use. Um, I usually recommend listening through the interview in, in its entirety once or at least at like double speed and following the transcript just so you really get a feel of what was said and how it was said. 
So the last tip for the interviewer is to give feedback. Now this can be uncomfortable. It's not, feedback is not the let's try that as a short version or let's get an introduction. That's not really feedback, that's more just um, guiding the interview and getting your answers. Feedback to me means having those kind of awkward moments where you have to say basically that they're doing something wrong. And for most people, being on camera is stressful enough and then for someone to come and say that they're messing up, um, that can be really hard to take and it can be really, really hard on their morale to keep going through the rest of the interview. So it's really important to keep it positive because um, it's likely that even if they're doing one maybe big thing wrong, um, they're doing a lot of things right that they are focusing on. So that's why you want to do that shit or poop sandwich where you start with the good news, what they're doing right, you slide in gently what's going wrong, and then you end on another positive note to tie it together. So a really common problem that I have usually at the very beginning of the interview is the subject is really focusing on making sure that they're saying exactly what they want, how they want to say it, what words they're using are right, and they're totally forgetting about the emotional and the voice side of the interview. So building that shit sandwich for that situation would be starting with um, some positive feedback. That was some great information. That's exactly what we needed for that. But I think that you're so busy thinking about exactly what to say and saying it the right way that you're forgetting a bit about your voice and your face. So for this part, we're talking about why you made this company. That should, that's a pretty exciting thing. So um, don't be afraid to kind of let that emotion out have some smiling, um, emote a little bit, and really let yourself feel. Um, and then we can always, um, once we have that down, then we can go back and say, oh, we forgot about this part of information. But really, and a shit sandwich, um, you're like giving us really great information. Other than that, it's exactly what we're looking for. That was a great shit sandwich, Shayna. You don't wanna tiptoe around it. Sometimes you just gotta say like, hey, you're not using emotion, like they'll probably laugh. And if they're really, really nervous, maybe take a moment to stop the cameras or talk about what's going on. I also like to remind people that as long as you're taking B-roll, like we're not gonna see your face that much. Um, it's really about how you're saying things and how you're talking and just how you sound. And your face will usually follow. Whew, okay, those are all my tips. I really hope that it was helpful. I'd love to learn more if you have your own tips that you've heard or that you use. But I think if you took some notes, maybe you gotta go back and take some notes, watch it again, and you use these kinds of tips, conducting an interview or being the subject of an interview is only gonna get easier as you continue to practice. I am not an outgoing person, but I've been <laughs> filming myself for YouTube videos since I was 13. So it really got easier as time goes on. Give yourself a chance. Don't rule it out right away that you're not someone who can be on camera.